most important thing for us yesterday was to have a really good bounce back practice, right? Because the last thing you want to do when you lose a tough, close game is have that come back and get you the next time you play, especially with as quick as we turn around to play Oakland because they pose a ton of problems on their own. They're making 11 threes a game. Um, everybody on their team shoots the ball. They have one guy uh, that plays that doesn't shoot threes at a considerable rate. So that is going to be a real challenge for us, making sure that we're defending not only the three-point line, but their leading scorer is a six-foot-seven inside-outside player that's averaging almost 25 points a game. So the bottom line for us is, is making sure we're locked into what we've got to do to be better for this, learning from the game the other night, making sure our energy and our spirit is really high, and uh, getting ready to play. And looking forward to another excellent crowd. I mean, it was phenomenal. On, on Saturday night, just just phenomenal in there to have that type of energy. Um, the, the whole atmosphere was great, and uh, let's look. We're looking forward to building on all of that. So, go ahead. Getting a chance to uh, look back at that, you, you wanted to look back at the tape. What, what was your biggest takeaway on, you know, what went wrong? Got to learn how to win. We got to learn how to string stops together. Uh, we got to get some put some scores together. You know, some of our turnovers. I mean, we had we had moving screen calls, right? I mean, in. Uh, uh, there's no question that a lot of things, it, 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 we did a lot of really good things, but the things that really hurt us, you know, this was the first time we've had significant foul trouble. And uh, when you lose a guy like Ray Sean, that really hurt us with the amount of time that was left in the game for all the things that he brings to the table. But we just needed to string more stops in a row together. And it's very easy to look at the end of the game and we should have executed better. There's no doubt about that. But if we string some stops together, uh, we make a couple shots that were there, especially late. Maybe we're, maybe, maybe they're chasing us. Yeah, a bit, uh, it was a one possession game, and we've been in a couple of those now, and we just got to figure out how to win those. I guess coming into the season, Clemson and Arizona State were the two big ranked non-conference games you had. You know, have you been able to see where this team's grown? You know, from the start of the season to Clemson or from Clemson to Arizona State. Oh, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, th th but there's there's still a lot of holes we got to work through right now, right? But they're but they're. They're, they're fixable. You know, we've got to be creative. We've got to be creative with, with what we're trying to do at the point position at times to make sure we're taking care of the ball better, to make sure we're getting a good flow with our offense. Um, we've got to be a consistent rebounding team, you know, and, and bottom line for us, probably going back to your question, the number one thing we didn't do nearly as good a job of is guard the ball, just absolutely just guard the dribble. So those are things that are giving us problems, and we've got to keep looking for ways to, to not only get better at those, but to hide those inside of the game, but I definitely see improvement, definitely see progress. And um, there were a lot of really good things inside of that game the other night. And we just got to learn how to build on those, how to fix the other things, and knowing that it's going to be extremely tough uh, with everybody that we play inside of this schedule with league play so close to us. Do you, when you talk about the crowd the other day, and you uh, saw mm -hmm. comments after the game about how enthused you were sure. about the crowd. Coming to a school like Georgia, that, does that give you hope of what you're obviously trying to oh, build and what you could see here, I'm sure, when you, absolutely. When you sold the vision of absolutely. You know, that this could be a school that at least could pay some attention to men's basketball? Yeah, absolutely. And to me, and then, and then when you hear the people that have been here, you know, Greg McGarity, uh, I got a tremendous text from President Moorhead, I mean, right after the game. Uh, John Bateman, you know, when you talk to different people that know it like I don't know it, mm -hmm. and they talk about... Uh, the feeling when they talk about the, the energy or they talk about the atmosphere and the way people feel about it, that's exactly what you want, right? That's, that's what you want. I, I won't be happy till we're selling out every night, you know, and that'll come and it's just going to take a little time. But to have that type of energy and that type of crowd the other night, uh, it's a tremendous step in the right direction. And uh, to have two crowds over 9,000, to have the people engaged the way that they are uh, was huge. And we just got to keep, we just got to keep that energy going and, and really, uh, we need them to keep helping us in those tough situations in a game. You know, read the game and, okay, now we really need to turn it up a little bit to help get these stops. And, and uh, we're all learning each other. But I, I love, the, love the atmosphere, and it's definitely something that we're looking forward to building on throughout the rest of the season. Coach, um, we just spoke with Tony <coughs> a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's back from his, mm -hmm. you know, concussion. What did you see from him on um, uh, I thought he did a really good job. I mean, I, th I think he did a, a very good job inside of the game. I thought he was a little tentative early in practice, but he didn't bring that to the game. And I think he just he's, – he's got some Swiss Army knife to him. You know, he can cover a lot of ground for us and, and make a lot of things happen. What he's got to be now is a consistent defender, uh, a consistent rebounder, 
And uh, I mean, the ultimate uh, uh, Swiss Army knife at seven foot is Nick, right? But it's six foot six, six foot seven, whatever Torian is, that's what we need from him as well. You know, just be very versatile for us. And um, he, he's one of the best on our team at moving without the ball, making sure that he continues to do that, making sure he continues to facilitate. But just play hard, aggressive, and play like a senior. I mean, you play play well against small, against bigs. I mean, defensively. I mean, a Torian. Yeah, a Torian. Oh, yeah. absolutely. You know, I think we 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 want to do a lot of switching. Now, that doesn't mean that we've we've got to be able to guard our man, right? That's going to be huge in this game. Um, this is not a game where we can be an overhelps, and and we work. You know, obviously, we want to get better guarding the ball, but we work at not overhelping every day, constantly, because it's a great epidemic in college basketball. We're no different than anybody else. And, and you've got to understand the difference between scoring penetration and just lateral dribbling penetration, you know, that's trying to get you to bite and kick it to an open three-point shooter. Oakland is phenomenal at that. And we cannot be in that type of situation. Our, our discipline on the ball, our discipline of guarding our man, and at the same time paying attention to a guy that roams inside and outside at 25 points a game. It's got to be really strong in this game. And Atorian's a huge part of that. Coach, uh, probably one of the questions I feel more than anything else is uh, I have people say, what's, what's wrong with Turtle Jackson? Uh, Turtle's a guy, obviously, he's a local kid, and he was pretty, he got some five-star mentions coming out of high school. He's still starting, but he's obviously his minutes, uh, he doesn't play as much, he spends a lot of time there. How would you assess what Turtle Jackson is doing for you and, 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 and your level of satisfaction? Well, I think our, our entire guard corp is, is we've got to get more consistency out of it, not just him, but all of them. You know, Tyree Crump, is, at times, he, he looks phenomenal with shooting the ball, and there's other times he's missing open shots that he would make that just come down to footwork. And I think it's, it, that can be said for everybody right now. We, we've, I spend a lot of time right now thinking about how we can get him, in that particular case, Turtle, going more, how we can move him around more, how we can get more catch and shoots, how we can get him open. You know, Turtle, a lot of times, doesn't look at the rim. I mean, he's looking to drive it. He's looking to pass it. He's looking to attack. But he doesn't catch the ball looking at the rim. Right? And, and the ball goes, the eyes go to the floor and the ball goes to the floor rather than looking for his jump shot. Man, we need more shooting from him. We need more outside shooting from a lot of guys. And, and he is definitely a part of that. But I'm not down on him in any stretch. And, and um, we, we think there's a lot there. And, and again, I'm just going based on what he's been like for me for nine months, which has been fantastic. And um, I, think he's, I think he's a good game or two away from feeling a lot better about his game. You'd never read it with him. But I never coach him like what's wrong with him or what he can't do. I coach him based on we need more of this, we need more of that. We've got to get him there. And that's exactly how I view the whole team, but it, especially in a case like that with him of a guy that we know is capable. The turtle's footwork on his shot where you want it to be? No, not yet. It was a change, right? I mean, there was a change there. Um, um, you know, he, he has an unorthodox style. I mean, he, 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 it's somewhat of a sideways shot. And you don't have a lot of control of the ball that way. So it's a little bit more about stepping, and he's worked extremely hard on that. And I think once he gets even more consistent with that, well, two things for him to be more consistent. Num number one, it's the footwork. But well, probably that's probably, yeah, that's probably number one. Number two is looking at the rim. Maybe 1A, 1B, right? <laughs> he's got to look at the rim. That doesn't mean he starts firing shots off. But the other thing that's been a, a big challenge for all of them is to really understand the spacing, the, the, the range, not – Let's shout, you know, go out and shoot 25-foot bombs. But it's, it's how far back you've got to get to create space on the court. That's why we play with the NBA line down so much. That's why we play with a four-point line. Not to take four-point shots. There is no such a thing. Not to take 33-foot shots, but to get spaced and get behind it to help increase our footwork. Turtle sometimes takes short steps. Tyree will take short steps. Tishon will take short steps. We need them to get more of a step, right? Which give your, your, your shot, your drive, your pass, your shot fake, it should never look different. Your footwork should always look the same in every aspect of that. And, and that's what we've got to continue to work on. But it's one thing to work on it. It's another thing to scrimmage it and do it in practice. It's a whole other thing to have it come in the heat of the game. And uh, it's still early in that sense. So we've just got to continue to, to work on that, keep giving examples through film, uh, working on it in drills. We've already had... Uh, 30, 35 minute workouts with everybody this morning before we practice, which was very much 95% shooting the ball. And so we want to we want to make this time of year really work for us. Do you, I'm curious, how, what has this adjustment been like coming from a school that was obviously so basketball oriented? Has it been anything that's caught you off guard or just 
is it a tough adjustment for somebody no. who to, to school where obviously football is such a big no because coaching is coaching to me mm -hmm. right not at all and the other night was fun I mean I think that just keeps showing I mean opening night right I mean two crowds over 7,000 I mean at the beginning that stuff's exciting to me you know building is exciting to me you know Indiana had to be rebuilt big time mm -hmm. and and there was tradition and all those types of things and we rebuilt it and then once we rebuilt it once because we started over at the beginning literally started over we had one player returning in the program we had to start over again you know then that team turned around and won so the, the building of a program the being a part of that on the daily process being in the gym you know Seth Greenberg said something to me at one point in time last year when I was in television you know we're just talking about different you know he does so much traveling and we're in the studio one time and he just it's something about George he said their facilities are better than what you had in Indiana that always registered in my mind mm -hmm. right because he had just made a trip to Georgia I guess or done a game something like that like it's all here right that's all you want you want to be in a great working environment great atmosphere let me tell you what I'm not used to having an athletic director that is is waiting for me after games I'm not used to having them call me with things after the game I'm not used to being in a situation where I'm getting a text from the president after the game and 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 not some hey hang in there but real words mm -hmm. you know to me that is the value now that is what for a person like me that went through the nine years I had in Indiana so much good mm -hmm. some I you know some not so much the bottom line is when you get that kind of care you know that people truly care that's exactly what we were looking for Get somewhere where you're aligned, where you're together, where you're working together for a common goal, and and people care, right, inside your administration. And that's exactly what we got. So when you get something like that, that drives the energy and the inspiration up in me. And so that's far better for me than, well, we've got this or we've got that. Because you know, those are the things that really matter. Do you have the togetherness? Do you have the connectedness? Do you have the ability to work with your team? And I get to work with great guys and great coaches every day. So, uh, and not that I didn't have that at Indiana, mm -hmm. I did, you know, but that's what you want. You want that level. You want to be working with people like that and to have that level of care in-house is tremendous for me. How much